Streamlit allows you to create super quick web apps using Python. Let's learn it together. We'll be looking at code to draw elements like data frames, interactive data frames, such as this one, charts, which expand and collapse, experimental functions such as container width, interactive maps, sliders, this one just squares the number, keys, which utilizes session state, checkboxes, which show or hide elements, drop down menu with selections, buttons, which are functional, as you can see, radio buttons, selections, progress bar, and caching. Caching stores the value of uh, slow functions to the cache so that you can use them quickly in the future. Here our slow function is running. Its result will be saved to the cache right here. We're going to be looking at sidebar, how to add widgets to the sidebar, as you can see. And we're going to be looking at pages, how to create pages for our app. Let's begin. Streamlit allows a quick web app development platform using Python alone. Its documentation is written very clearly. You just need to pip install it, just like that. All the examples I'll be talking about are under main concepts. You can read of them there, but I have brought them all together for convenience. You will also need to have pandas and numpy pip installed to follow along with this tutorial. To start a streamlit web app, from your terminal, you need to start a command prompt using this down arrow. You can also use a command prompt from the Windows search menu, like this. Then run streamlit run learning underscore streamlit.py. This is the name of your file, which is this one in my case from your working directory. And a new browser window will pop out, just like this. And it will also point you to the location of the web app as well. Now let's have the code and the web app side by side and follow along to see what's happening. The first line of code prints let's learn streamlit together header along with an emoji. Syntax is simple. You just need to have a string and colon blue for the color, square brackets and whatever you need to write. For emojis, you need to have them in between columns. Next one is the magic commands. As you see, st.write writes this magic command right here. But to display the DF, we use no, str uh, no streamlit commands whatsoever. It's not called the magic commands. This data frame is rendered here just by the DF just being written here like this. When you modify your code, for example, if you want to comment on the system and save this file, I'm doing it with control S, then this uh, source file change indication pops up. We can just rerun it or click on always rerun so that anytime we save our file and make changes, the app will restart. As you can see, the magic commands had disappeared from here. Next, I have a commented out example of how we could have replicated this with just using st.write. Now, if I save this, a new column will pop out with the here's your first attempt, and the, exactly the same data frame pops up. But this time, we're not using a magic command, but we're using the st.write. The next example, we're defining a data frame, and we are using the st.data frame to render it on the web app. We're just defining 10 rows and 20 columns and creating some random numbers using NumPy. Pay attention that this data frame is actually interactable. You can actually click on it, click Control F, and do searches on it, which is pretty cool. With this line of code, you can actually use Pandas data frame styling property to style this. We save this. As you can see, all the max values are highlighted. Next, let's take a look at the chart. Drawing a chart is super simple. You just say sd.line chart. Here we are drawing A, B, C, D, A, B, C columns, and just for some random numbers. This is interactive as well, and you can actually save it also. Here we are using an experimental decorator, sd.experimental underscore memo. We're setting its state using the sd.checkbox right here. And if we click on it, it automatically expands to the width of your screen. Now go to the documentation and read more about the experimental stuff. They're pretty fun. This line right here is what engages the container width. All of this web app is running from a single file right here. And I will be uploading this to my Patreon if you like to have the convenience of having done all of this in a single file. Otherwise, you can copy it from the video or every one of these examples are available at Streamless documentation as well. I'll put a link to Streamless documentation and to my Patreon in the description. Next is an interactive map. Here, the example just charts the latitude and longitude, uh, particularly crafted so that they are randomly spread around San Francisco. Now, this map is interactive and it's the map of the whole world. You can use this map for your applications by just calling sd.map. 
and the metadata is defined right here by random points. Here we are defining a slider to x, st.slider x. It takes in an input, and then we're just simply st.writing x, which is the square of it, x squared. So if you were to move the slider to, let's say, 6, then 6 squared is 36. Perfect. Next, st. takes input box with a key. This key is stored in the session state so that it remains perpetual because the way Streamlit works is that anytime a user interacts with the page, the entire page and your entire script is reloaded. To understand this clearly, I have zoomed out from the web app. So if I every time I change the slider, as you see, the chart is being redrawn because the reason is the chart is based on random numbers. And every time I change the slider, the entire script runs again. And each time we get a new random numbers. If you're if you were drawing the chart, of course, from a data set, then this wouldn't happen. But this is important to know about Streamlit. This is why keys and session states are important. Because this text input has a key called name, we can actually call it from st.session underscore state.name. And if we were to type in a name here and enter, echo will be printed because of this line right here. And even though if we were to change the slider at any point in time, the session states remain steady and then echoes remains, the key name remains on the page. This line defines a checkbox called show data frame, which is right here. And when we click it, it shows the data frame. And when we unclick it, it removes it. Here, pay attention that we are using magic commands right here. It's just by writing a chart underscore data here. You're not using any ST commands. This is why this is called a magic command. As far as the chart data, it's just a pandas data frame, which is populated by random numbers. Next, we are defining a select box, which is right here. By using a pandas data frame, we are using the first column as options, and we are defining a key so that it will be written into session state. And then we are printing the select box session state. If you were to select three, as you see, you selected three is written right here. Because we are assigning the selection to option, and we are using the magic commands by printing for printing, you selected, and then the option, which is defined right here which is the outcome of the select box. If you were to select four, then four will be displayed. Next, we're defining a sidebar. Again, this is, all this is very easy. st.sidebar.selectbox. How would you like to be contacted? And we're giving it some options. We're also defining a slider at st.sidebar.slider. And if you look at the sidebar, our options are appearing right here. This is perfect if you want to put some of your options or some functionality into the sidebar. It's very easy. As you see here on the sidebar, we also see some pages, such as the main page 2 and page 3. You can also resize the sidebar. There is no code within our learning streamlit file to make these pages happen. They simply exist in pages directory. You have to make in your working directory a pages directory, and then just make different files for them, main underscore page, for example, or page underscore 2. This one just has some dummy code in it that just prints out a markdown main page and some emojis. And as you can see, this is what's being printed. Streamlit automatically detects your files in pages and adds them to your sidebar. It's super convenient and very easy. You can be creative and determine the layout of your web app by using columns. Here we're defining two columns and assigning to st.columns2. This means now we're going to have two columns. And then you can use a column just like a sidebar. Here we're defining a bottom button by saying left underscore column dot button press me, which is this one here. And I'm added a quick button function, which just does left column dot right woohoo. And when we click this, it writes in the left column woohoo. If we were to simply say st dot right here and save our and save our web app, then clicking this would write it after the columns right here. You can use the columns with with block. For example, with right column, we are defining a radio button with some options here. It is the syntax for defining options here. And then we're just saying st.url you're in the whatever was chosen from the radio button using an F string. And that is displayed right here. If I were to click different options, the string is updated right here. Next, we're defining a progress bar as seen right here. We are saying that the latest iteration to be an empty st object. And we're defining the bar as st.progress. Then we say for i in range 100, creating a loop. Then for each iteration, last iteration text, so we write the text right here. And then we're updating the bar.progress, which was assigned right here by one. And then we're sleeping for 0 0.1 seconds. And then when we 
where to click anything, this iteration will start over again. And this is our progress bar. If you were to have a function or something, you will just replace this dummy for loop with your function. And while you're waiting for some process to be completed, this status bar, this status bar will be displayed. Keep in mind that if the progress bar to be displayed with a function, you would probably need to call it with a fit with block, such as right here. Finally, let's talk about caching. Caching is done by this decorator right here, st.cache. If you have a function, maybe you're making a long call, maybe you're doing some computation, which is going to take a while. Here I've simulated it with a for loop right here in the function, my slow function. Then I'm creating a checkbox saying that run slow function. And only when this checkbox is marked, then my slow function will run. Every, anytime your function runs or instructed to run, then when the streamlet first time witnesses that function, and if it does have the caching decorator, then it will actually cache the result so that you can use it quicker in the future. All we have to do is just click this slow run slow function while the page reloads. So we have to wait for the progress bar to finish. And after that, our slow function starts running. This is going to take about 10 seconds or so. And the answer is this. And now this answer is cached. So even if you were to interact with the page, and if the page script is rerun from scratch, we always have access to this function. And we can know this by clicking and unclicking this. We don't have to run this function again. The result is saved in a cache. There are some options here. You can actually clear the cache right here. This is it. Thank you for watching. I really enjoy working with Streamlit. I'll make more in-depth videos in the future. Uh, I've created a Discord channel. Feel free to come there and chat with us. I'll put all the necessary links in the description and see you in the next video.